morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to Navideo. We are going to derive the series expansions today for our cosine and the sine integral. This comes hand in hand with the series expansion for our um, upper sine integral. Okay, so we are going to dive right in. Basis for this is the series expansion that we have derived before. You could also do it differently, uh, differently using the integral definition of this whole thing right here. Okay, and then do a big rotation, but uh, it's it's not so nice. It's it's harder than doing it this way. We are going to do it now. Okay. First off, we would like to assume that this series up here converges. Okay, we are only going to do this for converging values of z and also imaginary z. Okay, i times z. This is what we have to plug in in a second. If we don't do this, it means that we can't rearrange the series right here, okay? It has to converge absolutely, I think, and uniformly. The pure mathematicians can tell me in the comments what it needs to be. Now, we are going to dive right in. We are going to plug imaginary arguments into here and see what we get. I'm going to put it here, okay? Then we are going to have i times z, okay? putting the i into here also, and also we are going to have i times z to the kth power. Just a simple transformation. Basically, this thing is now equal to what we have right here sitting on the chalkboard, but we want to decompose it such that we can compare the real and imaginary part. Okay, just like with the regular derivation for the sine and the cosine, comparing real and imaginary parts on the complex exponential function. At first, I would like to do a little um, playing around. Let us say that we can use the rules of the logarithm right here. The logarithm of a times b is the same as the logarithm of, of a plus the logarithm of b. Okay, only choosing the principal branch right here, then it does work out, meaning our logarithm that we have right here is thus the logarithm of i plus ln of z. We have extracted our natural log of z, that's good, that's what we need. But also we have this natural log of i right here. Like I said, only by considering the principal branch, it's quite easy, okay? If we would like to get to um, our boy i as a complex number, what do we need to do? We need to get pi over two on the principal branch up, okay? Meaning we are going to land at our i by saying i is thus on the principal branch nothing other than e to the i pi over 2. Meaning if we now take the natural log on both sides, e is going to cancel out. Meaning the natural log of i is thus nothing but i times pi over 2 on the principal branch. Okay, I hope this did make sense to you guys. It's just a little intuitive explanation right here using a little bit of geometry and complex plane action. And now we can move on. Now let us rewrite our e i z. e1 of i z is thus nothing but negative oily macaroni constant. Now the negative sign into both parts right here. So negative i times pi over 2, that's good. We have extracted a little imaginary part right here already. And then minus the logarithmus naturalis of z. Also, we have the series right here, and I would like to write everything out and then rearrange. Negative. Okay, this is now our series. We are going to write everything out by using the powers of i. The powers of i. Okay, leaving us with. At first, we are going to get k being equal to 1. We are going to get a negative sign right here. Um, exactly. Negative sign, and then we are going to get i times z over 1 times 1 factorial. Then the next one, positive. i squared, z squared over 2 times 2 factorial. Negative, okay, I hope you see a pattern. On the odd parts, we are going to get negative signs and odd powers of i, okay? That's just like with the sign, okay? Little spoiler alert right here. Now we are going to get um, that this is going to leave us with i to the third power, z to the third power over 3 times 3 factorial, and then plus i to the fourth power, z to the fourth power over 4 times 4 factorial, and then few more iterations. Negative i to the fifth power, z to the fifth power over 5 times 5 factorial, and the last one plus i to the sixth power z to the 6th power, 6 times 6 factorial minus dot dot dot, up until infinity. Like I said, 
for us to rearrange everything and turn this into two new Taylor series basically, we need to have this to converge. Okay, this is something that we need right here. Now, let us compute the powers of i and see what we get. i squared is nothing other than negative one. Okay, we are going to get a negative sign right here. Also, i to the third power is i squared times i, leaving us with negative i. Now for the next one, i to the fourth power is i squared times i squared is negative one times negative one is positive one. Coolio, okay? Works out quite nicely. i to the fifth power is i to the fourth power, positive one times i, leaving us just with an i right here, okay? And then i to the sixth power is i to the fourth power times i squared is going to give us negative one, and so on. You see, now we have parts with an i in it, and parts without an i in it. And now we are going to rearrange and see what we get. Under the condition that everything converges. This means that we have e1 of i times z is thus nothing other. Negative Euler macaroni constant. Negative i times pi over 2. Negative the natural log of z. And also we are going to get, I'm going to sort stuff out now. We are going to get plus z squared over 2 times 2 factorial. And also we are going to get negative, negative z to the fourth power, 4 times 4 factorial. And then spoiler alert, okay, negative z to the sixth power, uh, positive z to the sixth power because negative and negative becomes positive. So positive z to the sixth power over 6 times 6 factorial. Negative and so on up until infinity. Now we are going to go for the imaginary part. I'm going to drag the i to the outside on all parts and we are going to be left with yeah just, just positive i. I'm going to put it like this. Positive i times a lot of stuff right here yet again. We are going to have positive z over 1 times 1 factorial and then negative z to the third power over 3 times 3 factorial. And then next one is going to be positive z to the fifth power over 5 times 5 factorial, negative and so on up until infinity. We can really found this one. Okay, we are basically done with our series expansions. We only need to put this into nice sigma notation. Okay, this is the last thing I um, want to do right here and then we are going to sort out the real and imaginary parts. Now, that's equivalent to saying we now have e1 of i times z is nothing other than negative Euler macaroni constant, negative the natural log of z. Let us go for the real part at first. Then our real part plus a sum running from, okay, we can let it start at 1, okay, being greater or equal to 1 in this case, of z to the kth power. Definitely uh, to the 2 kth power because we need to get the even powers right here and also over even numbers times even factorials over 2 times k times 2k factorial. Okay, it looks a bit awkward and also we need to have an alternating series. So negative 1 to the kth power. Starting off with a positive sign meaning we need to have k plus 1. I hope this does make sense. Okay, those are some really weird looking series e expansions right here. And now we are going to have our imaginary part. I'm going to drag the i to the outside plus i times negative pi over 2. Do not forget that we have the negative pi over 2 term right here. And also we have a series expansion, this one right here, leaving us with positive. Okay, this is still part of the imaginary part right here. Sum starting from 1, yet again, oh no, we can let it start from 0 this time, okay, being greater or equal to 0 of all the odd powers over the odd numbers times the odd factorials, meaning z to the 2k plus 1th power over 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 factorial, and also it's an alternating series starting with a positive sign, meaning we are going to have negative 1 to the kth power this time because our index starts from 0. Now we can close off the parentheses and those are our series expansions. Meaning this stuff right here is our real part. Meaning we can identify this right here to be our C 
of our z. Okay, it looks quite weird, but it is what it is. And now we also have our imaginary part consisting of negative pi over 2 plus this thing right here. Now, what we have this thing right here is basically negative our imaginary part. Meaning, this is just our lower sign of z, but with a negative sign basically. But also what it is, it's z of z minus pi over 2. Meaning, negative pi over 2 is what we have right here and our sine integral has this serious representation. Okay, I hope this does make sense to you. And this is basically it. This concludes our x course of the sine and the cosine integral. And now you can go ahead and do some numerical analysis and actually calculate values of your favorite integral boys right here. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel. If you like, if you want to support channel a bit more by the teachers I created, or support channel on Patreon. Up until next video, have a flamble day. See ya. Ciao. <laughs> Ich wäre da gar nicht hochgekommen. Was willst du zeigen?